Debat. The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. Well, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and what an honour it is to be in the House once again. And as this is my first time actually giving a prepared remarks, I would like to be able to thank the people of Aurora, Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill, for electing me once again. And this time, I ran as a Conservative, here, here, and I am here, so here, here. pleased that they saw fit to send me back here as a Conservative. I am humbled by the opportunity. I take this responsibility very seriously, and I want to thank all the volunteers, all of the uh, people who supported me from across the country, and I would like to thank, of course, my family, without whom I would truly be lost. So we're here today to talk about a very important motion for a very important point in our history. The Canada-Chinese relationship is probably the greatest diplomatic challenge of our time for Canada. And that's why we are proposing the composition of a special committee. And the reason that we need a special committee to examine and review all aspects of the Canada-Chinese Canada government relationship is because we have standing committees and they're focused on individual subject matter areas. So from foreign affairs to international trade to official languages to uh, health and well-being. They have many other things that they need to study as well. So we want to ensure that those other committees have the opportunity to study the things within their mandate that are important to Canada. But something of this magnitude, this complexity, and this breadth and depth of scope of being able to examine and review all aspects from foreign affairs to health and safety to cybersecurity to uh, defence. The only way that we can look at it from a cross-functional perspective is by having a special committee. So that's why we're proposing it. But why is the Canada-China relationship important now? What really is at stake? Well. In the last five years, we have seen an incredibly rapid deterioration of the relationship, from everything to uh, wrongful and arbitrary imprisonment to pressures on our trade agreements. We're seeing uh, China buys $4.7 billion of agricultural products from Canada, and yet at the moment they're not honouring uh, our trade agreements and are punishing our canola farmers. That affects everyday lives. Everyday Canadians are being impacted by the relationship and the failed approach with that relationship. We're also seeing um, that we have foreign state-owned resource companies, from natural resources to uh, technology companies, and there's a concern about whether or not we can protect the viability and the national security interests of Canada. We've seen cyber attacks from uh, the Chinese government on our Canadian government departments, and we're worried about the potential for influence and interference and spying in our in telecommunications uh, networks with the introduction of Huawei. Now, other countries have taken the step of banning Huawei from their internal communication networks for those very reasons. But at the same time, Canada needs to have the opportunity to have a robust discussion, examination and review to understand whether or not that's the course of action that we need to take. Everyday Canadians are also facing challenges from the Canada-China relationship with respect to health and safety. We find that we've got an overwhelming number of illicit drugs, fentanyl and other illicit drugs, coming into the country and literally killing our citizens. We need to find a way to stop that and prevent that from happening. But the only way we can do that is if we understand the size and scope, how it's coming in and where it's coming from. We know that the United States has done an initial uh, review uh, 
there was, I think it was a 60 Minutes uh, documentary talking about just how serious this aspect is, uh, and leading to a, con a congressional committee that said that uh, the, it's the highest number of illicit drugs, uh, fentanyl is coming from China in the United States. So do we have a similar problem uh, here in Canada? Then we can talk about defense and security. I mentioned Huawei. But there are other mechanisms f where our telecommunications and information, banking, infrastructures are under threat. Uh, money laundering uh, is also possibly an issue that we need to look at, and other aspects of uh, espionage. We're looking at the Chinese military being the second largest uh, investment behind the United States at $250 billion. Now, that's significant and is something very much to be concerned about. And some of those investments are going into icebreakers and to submarines, uh, which we're finding uh, are in Canada's Arctic. And so what we're looking at there, we have the Chinese government talking about themselves as a near Arctic state. Now that's a very interesting uh, proposal and so we would need to understand how that affects our sovereignty and our security and our ability to leverage the opportunities that Canada's Arctic offer. These are serious issues that affect Canadians not only today but into the future and why we need to have an opportunity to review them and examine them in depth. Some of the other things we want to talk about is that China, of course, is building 3,000 kilometers of pipeline. They're looking at massive expansion in the Belt and Road Initiative and in many ways having the opportunity to leverage certain countries simply by making investments in their infrastructure. Those are the types of things that we are competing with. And if we're not able to understand how we're going to leverage the resources that we have here, we're not going to be able to compete in that, in that future. And then we look at climate change. And there's no question that climate change is something very important, something that we need to take action on. Well, China's emissions have gone up exponentially and are continuing to do so, while Canada, still expanding our economy, is not seeing the same rapid rise in our emissions. In fact, we are working to bring them down, and we have some of the most advanced, highly technological uh, and environmentally friendly approaches. These are opportunities that we could help China to look at how they can reduce their emissions. Also, another opportunity for us to examine and review how we can best leverage. So why now? Well, obviously we've seen a deterioration and we have a Liberal government and a Prime Minister that admires the Chinese government and is not, does not have a strategy and a plan to actively move forward on improving the relationship. We as parliamentarians have a responsibility and are entrusted with that responsibility to have these in-depth review and conversations. That's why we have parliamentary committees. So this is exactly what we should be doing as parliamentarians to bring in experts, to bring in stakeholders, and to bring Canadians along with us as we do this very important review. So that's why we need this committee. That's why it is all party. And that's what we as parliamentarians can do to, to fulfill our role. And it needs to be an interdisciplinary committee so that we can look at all aspects so we understand the complexities and the balances to make these strategic improvements for all Canadians. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Uh, questions et commentaires? The Honourable Member for Fleetwood Port Kells. 
Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, two quick questions for my colleague across the way. Uh, first, have, uh, in, in terms of the position that the Conservative Party is taking on the matter of China, have they consulted with constituents on the prairies, particularly in the agricultural sector, because obviously China represents a, a, a major market and the absence of that would be hurtful to many of the folks that you represent. The second one has to do more, not so much with Huawei, but with 5G generally. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, a lot of us have heard, you know, people, you want to say they have their tinfoil hats on, but they're really concerned about that technology and the impact of the, the, the radio frequencies used, uh, the possible health implications, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm wondering if the Conservatives have heard the same thing and what they think about it. So answers to two questions, if I may. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. And thank you very much for the question. Certainly, the relationship with $4.7 billion that the Chinese are pro procuring from Canada in terms of agricultural products, what, whether or not we can get those products to them has a significant impact on our economy. So yes, the farmers are dramatically impacted, and we need to understand if they do business in Canada, of course, and something goes awry, we have a rule of law structure where they can bring challenges. But in China, the same is not necessarily true. So absolutely part of why we would want to do the research of this committee is to be able to understand what the impact is, what the best way to address it is, and how we can move forward. Secondly, for 5G, exactly the same thing. I think it's new. We don't have all the information. So yet that is another area that we could look in in depth and the impact from a security perspective, but the impact from national uh, health perspective. Thank you very much. Comments? The Honourable Member for Cowich and Malahat Langford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And seeing as this is my first time rising in the 43rd Parliament, I'd like to thank the good people of Couch and Malahat Langford for again placing their trust on my shoulders. Um, I agree with the motion. I was a member of the Standing Committee on Agriculture in the last Parliament, and China loomed large in that committee as it did at International Trade, Foreign Affairs. And I, what I like about establishing this special committee is that it can take all of these separate threads and put them together in a comprehensive report to really look at all those issues. Now, over the course of the debate, I've heard from members of the Bloc and the Liberals, and there has been some concern over item K of the motion. I'm just wondering if the Honourable Member, uh, you know, can maybe find some way. Is it her intention to maybe get rid of that if we can maybe get more members in this House to support it and then allow the committee to go ahead and call those witnesses as it sees fit, as is uh, mentioned in this particular section? Thank you. The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I think that's a really important question because paragraph K says that the Prime Minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Public Safety, and the Canadian Ambassador to China be ordered to appear as witnesses from time to time as the committee sees fit. So if we want this committee to do the very important work that we are asking of it, then from time to time, they may see fit to actually need to hear from the Prime Minister, the Chinese Ambassador, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the Minister of Public Safety to adequately inform the committee on the government's position and why they've taken that position and why uh, the challenges to it. So there's no mandate that says they must appear, Madam Speaker. It says that from time to time, as the committee sees fit. And if we don't allow the committee to do that, then how will we give the committee the ability to do the real work we are asking of them on this committee? Here, here. Here.